The finals is about to have what Embark Studios describes as an all new experimental limited time game mode added where contestants battle it out in a 12 player solo match. So all you solo queuers out there are going to be happy. Let's look at that as well as other info about the update and talk about how the finals is flying after the first 40 days or so of season 1. Alongside the short trailer that you're watching now, here's what Embark Studios says about the latest update to the finals. On Wednesday, January 17, Embark Studios is launching Solo Banquet, the first limited time game mode for the finals. This all new experimental game mode releases alongside update 1.5.0, which also comes with a security update to anti-cheat and fair play, a store update, and plenty of bug fixes and balance changes. Solo Banquet is a fast-paced, all-in action game mode that allows contestants to show off their skills on their own terms. Play slow and methodical or run and gun, it's all up to you. Without a squad to rely on, strategy is more important than ever. Contestants battle it out in 12 player PvP single matches and the first player to obtain a total of 40,000 cash wins. Similar to standard banquet, contestants earn cash by collecting and depositing coins that drop from eliminated players or can be found in vaults around the map. Solo banquet and up Update 1.5.0 will be released on January 17. In the video description for the trailer, Embark also mentioned that the store update means a bigger store. Anyhow, firstly, I think this new game mode is going to please a lot of players. This is going to be magic for players who usually have to queue up as a solo anyway, and then have to deal with a complete lucky dip of teammates, some of whom are good, some of whom are bad, and some of whom just randomly leave the game altogether. Now you'll only have yourself to blame if you lose. Also it offers players who usually have teammates to play with some variety and also I think will be awesome for streamers and also content creators like me who want to go in and grab some footage of something specific in the game without it impacting on their teammates enjoyment of the game. I know the easter egg hunters in the community are going to be really happy about this too because they can wander off hunting for curiosities on the map to their heart's content. With 40,000 cash being the winning goal it'll be interesting to see if these solo matches run a lot longer than the team banquet mode. I also like the idea that players will have the opportunity to try vastly different playstyles, like going full send cod rush at one end and then stealthily slinking around the map grabbing coins from vaults and staying out of sight as you make your way to a cash out. It's going to be fun to try some experimentation. I do suspect though that the use of the medium's recon sensors is going to become a pretty dominant meta for this mode and it'll be interesting to see if Embark have to make any mode specific balance changes for solo bank it. There's definitely going to be lots to talk about with this new mode. The trailer for the update also showcases this new universal camouflage pattern outfit and gun skin for the F-car. A big part of me is happy to see that Embark haven't stepped too far away from their battlefield roots. The new mode aside, it's great to hear that further improvements will be made to anti-cheat, which is always a hot topic. Okay, let's come back to this update once it's out, but now I want to do a bit of a state of the game summary for where the game's at after nearly a month and a half. So let me paint an unusual analogy for you just for a moment that I think will help some players out there view the game's development slightly differently. On December 7th 2023 we left behind our half drunk kiwi fruit flavoured cappuccino in the departure lounge at an airport hidden in the Swedish countryside and boarded a brand new crazy jet plane of a game known as the finals. With the Stockholm based Embark Studios as the airline pilots and flight attendants we took off on this plane that had only been properly test flown four times before and right now we're rapidly approaching the halfway point through season one of this inaugural flight on the finals. So let's talk about how the flight's going. Now it might not have been hugely apparent on the channel so far but I'm actually a massive fan of analogies. The reason I love them so much is that sometimes when you compare a thing like a game that you're interested in understanding better to an unrelated thing like in this instance a journey on a plane and then push that comparison as far as you can that will often tell you something something new or even cause a mind shift about the way you think about the thing you're interested in. So for a moment, in the state of the game summary, I'm calling the finals an aeroplane. I know that might not make sense right now, but trust me, just stick with me here. Now, what's the most important thing about enjoying your flight on a plane? Is it the in-flight shopping? No. Is it the in-flight music on those free headphones that never fit well? No. Is it watching the flight tracker on that little TV? No. Is it even the free drinks on offer? 
To be fair, that is a nice touch, but sadly, no it's not. The most important thing that offers you the potential to enjoy your flight is that the plane doesn't fall out of the fucking sky. And I reckon this is where the analogy of the finals being a plane is going to help us understand where the game is placed right now and also how we should view its journey as a game. You see, Real pilots have this ultra short mental checklist that they refer to in tricky situations that you might have already heard of. Aviate, navigate, communicate. These three words remind them in order of what the most important things are about keeping the plane and its passengers and crew safe. Aviate. First and foremost, focus on keeping the plane in the air. When it comes down to it, it doesn't matter where you are and it doesn't immediately matter if you can't talk to anyone. If you can keep flying, you should be okay. Navigate. Once you're happy that you're flying okay, work out where you are and where you need to go. Communicate. When you're flying safely and you know where you're going, start communicating so that you can let others know where you're going and everyone can stop worrying about you or at least know what your emergency is. Once you have those three things under control, you can start to make sure that Mrs. Richards in seat 1A has her gin and tonic and beluga caviar. So let's apply this concept as an analogy for the finals, but instead of aviate, navigate and communicate, on the Embark Studios checklist, I reckon it says stabilise, balance and delight. In a moment though you'll see where this jet plane analogy falls over and how I reckon that can help us as players to understand the development process for the game. Following the game's release, Embark's number one priority has pretty clearly been to make sure the game is stable. And like a lot of games that release, the finals has had its fair share of issues with players reporting crashes and sometimes being locked out of the game. In fact if you search for the word crash in the finals discord right now you'll see that there are still a bunch of players having issues with the game crashing. But then we've also seen a bunch of balance changes for the game already, especially in patch 1.4.0, which was the last patch before many of the developers took their Christmas break. And it's looking like this upcoming patch will be similar. And now we're about to have a new game mode added, which I would say is way more towards the delight end of the checklist, because the game could carry on without a new mode and the devs could purely focus on making the game stable and keep tweaking the balance of the weapons, gadgets and specialized and players that enjoy the current modes would be pretty happy with that. But a new mode is more about making the game more fun. And this difference between aviate, navigate, communicate for a plane and stabilize balance and delight for the finals, I reckon points out something really important about the way we as players should think about the way the developers are working on the game. A game has a lot of pilots in the cockpit. For Embark Studios, it's probably around a third to half of their 300 old staff that are working on the finals, so probably a hundred or more game makers who can spread their focus right across Stabilize, Balance and Delight. And this really brings me to my point. Here's a comment that was made on my recent Easter Egg Update video. This game puts more effort into the ARG than into the game's player support team. What the commenter fails to understand is that the alternate reality game Easter Eggs are made by Embark co-founder Rob Runison completely in his spare time and are purely there to delight players, whereas you could consider the player support team as part of the stabilized group. They're there to deal with problems that are arising with players like players being locked out of the game or players who have individual issues with the game crashing. Now I'm not saying that Embark's player support team doesn't need to improve because it probably could improve by having better resources and some team members focusing on the discord while others deal with player support tickets. So players feel like they have some immediate direct support as well as issues being dealt with through the ticket system. More importantly though, what I'm saying is that time spent by Embark Studios on one aspect of the game that might delight players isn't taking away from the time spent on doing the basics of stabilization. Over the last 40 days, it's become clear that the Christmas break aside, the Embark team have all been working really hard to stabilize, balance and delight all at the same time. And we're seeing continual improvements on all fronts now, but all these things are going to take some time. If if you recall my video at the game's launch, Rob Runison took the time at the pre-launch event to make a few important points about their overall philosophy on the finals. He said, first of all, our biggest priority will always make sure that the game is running smoothly. We want to have as few bugs as possible. We want it to be well balanced and also a safe and fair space for players, a place that they can call the new game 
the new home. And we know that we would rather focus on making the core game better. We listen to our players' feedback. We want to fix issues rather than actually just queuing in more content into the mix. So that's very important. So Embark Studios may be working on stabilized balance and delight projects all at the same time, but their work is probably currently weighted to stabilize more than balance and delight. And I think compared to a lot of game launches, things are actually going very, very well. But there's no denying that the the game's also having a lot of common issues that almost all FPS multiplayer games have when they first launch. So as players, I think our job is simply to communicate the things we want fixed, not to criticise what else is being worked on at the same time, because we have zero insight into the allocation of resources within Embark Studios, and we shouldn't think as if there are only two pilots in the game's cockpit and that Stabilise should be the only focus. All three things, Stabilise, Balance and Delight, are going to take time to feel like they're really going well. Let's return to this comparison at the end of Season 1 and talk about the state of the game again then. We might get a better picture of how these parts are shaping up by then. Lastly, I want to talk a bit about the patches we've seen so far. In the first week we had patch 1.2.0 which was all about updates for the game's release, including new content, the new Las Vegas map, new map variants, new ways to express yourself in game changes to the weapons for the launch and movement changes which did bring some perceived issues. Patch 1.2.2 was a hotfix that was mainly some UI fixes. Patch 1.2.3 was a hotfix that resolved an issue with false bans and changes to skill based matchmaking and updated backfilling of games. In the second week we had patch 1.3.0 which lowered the unranked tournament requirement, fixed some crash instances, made animation improvements to movement so it would feel closer to the open beta experience and made sure Oceana and South America server regions were selectable on all platforms. Patch 1.4.0 made lots of balance changes and UI improvements. Then we had a 23 day gap where there were no patches over the Christmas break, although I know that a lot of the team continued to work on things in the background. And then just under a week ago, Patch 1.4.1 addressed the elephant in the room that is aim assist, specifically making sure that Rewasda no longer allows aim assist for mouse and keyboard players, which was a method of cheating. This was a change that unsurprisingly was very welcomed by the community. One way to view the significance of those patches is how long the patch notes were for each update. Here's a graph showing you the cumulative number of words that were written for the patch notes by the Embark team. It's a crude comparison, but it actually seems to work pretty well, because it's immediately obvious that the most significant updates were at launch, then just before the 23 day gap between patches for the Christmas break and now we're right on the verge of another major update. Additionally, even Embark Studios are calling tomorrow's update the first major update of Season 1, telling us that the patches we've seen up until now have all been pretty minor compared to what's about to drop. So really, we probably haven't had enough major updates yet to get a proper sense of how progress on the game is going. Again, Coming back to this at the end of Season 1 might be more telling, but for now, I reckon we should let Embark fly this crazy jet plane of a game, enjoy the new solo game mode, let them know what we want to be fixed, and otherwise allow them to keep learning to fly. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Do the usual YouTube business if you want to see more videos from me from now on. Give a like or comment as you see fit, and enjoy playing the new solo banquet mode. Kia kaha, stay strong. Everybody knows world ain't right Down on your knees Get up and fight